and we are live what is up everyone welcome to the stream once again to the army of the hall to the army of the high value engineers and today we're going to continue our poker decentralized poker engine peer-to-peer -peer, um, in golang and let me quickly notify as usual the administration notify the world that i'm alive Make it public. Yes. All right. So where did we where did we stop in um, the first episode, the kickoff, the kickoff stream? So let me see. Uh, let me quickly check YouTube because YouTube and streaming. Yes, it's okay. It's fine. It's fine. So um, we kicked off. We left off actually. Uh, Mike. Let us run this thing real quick, make run to see. We're starting our game server, Interstellar, welcome man. Appreciate, appreciate it a lot that you're here on the stream. It's still early, so I need to warm up my, my things. Um, so we make a game server. We make two players, we connect them with each other and we're handling messages and we have uh, forgot to place our new lines. That is, but first of all, uh, we have this peer-to-peer -peer server handler. I'm gonna make um, a new file and I'm gonna call this TCP transport go. And the reason for that is, uh, let me open up another, let me open up server on the left, on the right. Akan, happy weekend, great to be here. Akan, welcome man, welcome back. A loyal member, a loyal member, blah, loyal member of the team. Of the community so we're going to say package uh, this is going to be peer to peer and then so we're going to split this a little bit out because the logic in the server is going to be from an enormous proportions and i think uh, handling connections should be done in the tcp transport layer so we're going to move things out so we're going to say this peer thingy we're going to move it here Um, and I think or the read loop, we have an accept loop, we have a handle connection. Yes, this is actually a read loop. So we're going to actually move this. We're going to move this to what's going on here. We're going to move this to the peer itself. So we're going to say something like func peer uh, read loop. We need a, a message channel here. I'm gonna fix that. I think we need a message channel, which is be which is gonna be a channel of message like this. And I think we could also copy the message. Where is it? Because we're going to write our own protocol, our own gossip uh, protocol, message protocol like this. So we're gonna have a chain message so we can actually communicate between server and the TCP peer. Golang mechanics, um, the read loop. It's a loop, so no, no need to return an error because we cannot do anything with it. It's gonna be in an own go routine. And I think this should be private, uh, public. Uh, so we're gonna say something like, what's going on? Visual Studio Code is lagging, so my Vim commands are not triggering on time. All right, so we're gonna say four. We're gonna do actually the same thing like we did in this uh, accept loop real quick. Uh, read loop, by the way. Uh, where is it? Read here. So I think we can copy the whole uh, thingies. Actually. Like this, make a buffer. 1024 should be good. Um, I'm gonna read. It's the same mechanics, just the channel is gonna be the channel we give it here as an argument. And then um, you're gonna say, I mean, if there's an error, we're gonna break. 
so we can say uh, peer connection close right but also uh, to do I can can we have a link to this uh, on github need to study yeah I think the link is in uh, the previous episode so normally I, I place always a comment with a uh, github link but because it's a stream I can only comment when the stream is when the stream is done right but it's on github you should you should use that wait I will link it let me link it to you all good uh, get up. I think it's GG poker. Not quite sure. GG poker. Yeah, it is. Like this. And then, boom. Uh, John Latte, is this episode 2? Yes, this is episode 2. Uh, the previous episode is already available for replay. So, read loop. Um, To do, to do, what we need to do is basically uh, de unregister the peer, unregister this peer, and we cannot forget this, uh, at NDM, that's me. Yes. Uh, so basically it's going to keep reading, each peer is going to re uh, reading from the connection and then we're going to transfer messages with the channel, that sounds good. So we're also going to need um, another structure, now let me, how can I make this on top so you guys can uh, see it better without getting a stiff neck. So it's going to be type TCP transport, it's going to be a strict, like this. What's going on here? My desk is full of crumbles <laughs> because I actually live uh, in my desk. So I'm eating and do all that, uh, all the stuff, you know. TCP transport. Uh, we need a listen address. Uh, listen address. It's going to be a string. We need. Ah, oh, yes, I have an idea. The listener net a listener uh, let's say um, constructor new tcp transport um, maybe an address or something string a pointer to this thing uh, return tcp transport like this and say that the listen address is going to be the other and my hands are so sticky Oh, no, stick and sweaty. Knees weak, arms are heavy. Um, how can we split this out? So what what are we doing here? Connect that can be the same thing. Start. We say listen. We could do something like this. Uh, funk T TCP transport accepts or something. Or listen. Yeah. I'm going to make this refactor real quick so we can do messages uh, because I um, looked up how we're going to do the shuffle mechanics and everything's going to be lit. Listen, so we do this in a LAN thingy. We're going to copy this whole thingy. So we're going to make a new listener, TCP. Uh, it's going to be the T listen address. That should return an error, right? Uh, we're going to and better listener not quite sure if we need it maybe maybe we need it because we could do something like the listener later on uh, close right that's why we need to need to have this listener if you want to close for some reason these things return nil um, 
You're gonna say this. Listen and accept. Listen and oh man, itchy. <laughs> uh, yeah. Listen and accept. So we're gonna have this listener, and then we're gonna say, where is our accept loop? We're gonna delete this because we don't need it anymore. Handle con. Handle con. This is this read thingy. We don't need this anymore. Um, accept loop, yes. So we could do something like listen and accept will block. That's perfectly fine. Uh, that's perfectly fine. So actually, this error is actually um, useless. We're gonna say maybe break or something. We cannot break. We're not in a loop. Actually, yeah. No, we can. We can. We can have another. <clears throat> error F and we can we're gonna say um, TCP transport quit quit it stopped reason I don't know we need to figure that out <laughs> Uh, so we're going to say four, right? And then we're going to say something like um, the connection again, R is going to be LN accept, right? If R, man, my, I think it's, it's almost time. It's almost time to go back to native fin because my key binds, sometimes it doesn't register. Too late, I guess it's too late due to the lag. So, what are we gonna do if we have an accept error? We cannot we cannot return, with, because if you break in an accept error, everybody else, every other player trying to connect will cannot connect. Uh, we cannot be the, we cannot be punished by, uh, I don't know, hamsters in a wheel. So we're gonna basically just log this, right? And actually, let me quickly do something. Sirepsen, uh, Sirepsen, log, rus. Can I do something like uh, log rus error? If we have the error, we're gonna just continue, right? Log the error, continue, accepting things. Uh, then the con. We're gonna have an add peer, man, this refactor. Akan, would you recommend switching to native Vim? What are the benefits? Uh, I won't recommend, ah, difficult. Um, Oh man, I mean, look at this, in, in, in Vim you don't have this terminal, but you could say, yeah, you can have tmux and, and I know, I know, you can have the exact same setup in Vim, right? But, I don't know, navigating with these windows for me and, and VS Code feels so smooth and so fast. Everything is super fast in VS Code, <coughs> in my opinion, even though this, this, uh, file searching, you can have like a tree sitter and, and, and all that stuff in Vim and it's insane, but man, I don't want to hassle with my configuration all the time in Vim, right? I'm, I'm not that guy. People are spending, do this as a hobby, but I don't have time to maintain this configuration. And the only benefit you have, it's, it's a little, it's faster. The, yeah, it's, it's a little bit faster, but you won't notice. You won't notice unless I would recommend VS Code. Saves you a lot of time. Add peer. That's going to be a channel of peer. 
right? And we're also gonna have a del peer. It's also gonna be a channel of uh, peer, like this. Do we need to make these? Um, Add peer, del peer, it's gonna be a chen peer. Uh, del, like this. Del peer. Making mistakes. All right, because um, do we make the peer there? Yeah, we do. So we're gonna join this. We're not gonna send this in, in the TCP. This this is not going we're gonna do this in uh, in our server. So we can make a, a here. Here is is a very engineering, um, a very important engineering decision. It's a very for, foreseen, foretold, forefetched, but it's very important, and it will make the difference between a good engineer and a bad engineer, uh, expert and guru level, right? So you could say um, we're adding a new peer here in our in our transport, right? And uh, what we could do here is. Um, Start the read loop peer, right? We could say peer read loop, right? Like this. Uh, yeah. Which basically means we're starting the peer to read messages, but first of all, we need to make sure that we that that this peer is valid. And what I mean by that is. From a, from a transport TCP perspective, we could open the, the connection, the pipe, we could open the pipe and start reading. But from a, server, from a server perspective, it could be that this peer is not a good peer. What I mean by that is maybe um, we have too many players. Let's say we have a poker room, 10 players, and this is peer 11, <laughs> tries to connect. Um, we make a peer, we add it to the server, and we start the read loop, but then, when we add it to the server, we are in this um, add peer thingy right here, right? And then we need to say, yo, uh, we have too many players. So I think it's better to add the peer on the channel here and call it a day, right? And then here, when we add the player, we could do some logic. We could add maybe ask, yeah, we could do some logic, checking uh, if, if there is already, maybe the game is, it's, maybe it's a tournament. And nobody can join or something, right? And start a read loop there. Could save us some trouble. Although both both options can work just fine. It's just it's a difference between yeah. <laughs> uh, the thing is, is this gonna work from the bed? Uh, So go handle, con we don't need to do this, we don't need to do, what is this? Accept loop, can be gone, can be deleted. Uh, we don't need to listen, so what we're gonna do is quickly fix this so we can actually do some other stuff. Delete listener, we're gonna say transport, uh, which is going to be a pointer to a TCP transport. New server, maybe we can make the transport here. Yeah, 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 yeah. Other, uh, we could do this. S is a server, 
right? We're gonna return the server, so it's all good. It's the same thing, but different. But we're gonna say um, as transport is going to be uh, a new TCP transport like this. We're gonna say it's the as listen address. What's going on? You know what, what you can do instead of doing this, I mean, delete, wait, but we could do something like anonymous welcome, big in Japan, right? Big in Japan with anonymous, uh, as, I mean, you don't need to always make things private, I mean, I know it's a, a big discussion that can be opened up, but Konnichiwa, ni hao. I know, I think that's Chinese, by the way. Learned it from Dora, actually. Dora is insane. My kids watch Dora all the time. And um, I don't know, it's crazy. I can I have to study Go land channels. I saw a confusing syntax in the server Go file. Golang channels, yeah. Uh, I will make a, I will make a video uh, about go Golang concurrency because uh, it's easy but very hard sometimes. And atomic values and everything. Uh, I'm gonna make a video. I'm gonna make a video about things nobody actually actually knows, or only a few select people. Um, <clears throat> so we, we make this transport, then we're going to say the add uh, peer channel is going to be s at peer uh, del peer. Why is this still small? Oh, it's um, wait, I'm making, I'm making rookie mistakes. We're going to say tr is a transport, right? And we're gonna say S transport is going to be TR. And then we can say TR, that's the reason why it didn't work. Uh, TR, TR. Uh, wait, make a new transport, we're gonna... We can make this much, much beautiful, or much more beautiful. But yeah. Uh, we're gonna loop the server. Right, and then we're gonna say as transport, listen and accept. Uh, listen and accept. Okay, so not quite sure what's going on. Logris. Um, with fields, logris uh, fields, info, uh, it's gonna be peer, uh, com, remote. You see, that that's the reason why sometimes this will studio Player connected, right? Uh, new player. Wait, this is Delpeer connected. This is Adpeer. <clears throat> Fields. Uh, Player disconnected, right? Delete this log line and delete this log line. Okay, so we, we just discussed. Um, man, what is this? This girls dating thing on my channel all the time. I mean, how is this actually? Can I block this guy? Hey Nova, welcome. There's always some some bot uh, sending uh, channels about beautiful girls in there. 
Langery, you know. That's for after coding. That's not for now. All right. <clears throat> so we discussed uh, to not boot up the read loop of a page inside of the transport, but do it uh, right here. So in add peer, for example, we could say um, to do check uh, max players uh, and others game state logic, right? Something like this. But we're going to say for now peer read loop. And we need to make this in another go routine, right? Uh, read loop like this. What do we need to provide? A message channel? That's the this one. Look at this. How beautiful. How beautiful this all works out. But is this going to work? Let's see. Wait, I think I have... Uh, Logris. Uh, with fields. Uh, what's going on here? A game server running. Wait, start a new game server actually. Start it, new game server. Right? And then we can say uh, port. Tell us an address. Um, type. Texas hold them. <laughs> uh, hold them. Hold them. How do you how do you write this? Like this? Texas hold them. Fuck it. Like this. <laughs> I think it's it's like this. Um, hold them. Alright, make a run and see what's going on. Yikes. Uh, transport 77. Why don't you use line numbers? Because you don't need one. Look, I'm already at 77 and you are still scrolling in your editor looking for 77. <laughs> and then you come to my channel, ask me why don't you use line numbers? Hey, hey. Line, line 1024 and you see these people in the editor scrolling. Oh, 1044, scrolling for their line number. <laughs> Can you imagine? It's 2022. Line numbers are obsolete. <clears throat> um, add peer. Of course, it doesn't exist because we made this um, superior. Yeah, unreachable code, I know. But we can return here before we start the loop, so. Yeah, it is what it is sometimes. It's working. Uh, what is this? Ha yeah, we need to do this. Help. Yeah. Uh, we need to do. So this thing with mute, I think this mutex can be... Can delete this mutex. But although this map is in Golang, a map is not... The standard Golang hash map is not concurrent safe. So it would be nice if we sometime uh, in a stream, we should implement our own hash table, our own concurrent, concurrent safe hash table. Can you imagine? That would be nice. Um, completely rewrite a hash map in Go, but a concurrent version. But that's for later on. I will explain why we don't need this lock right now, because we are actually handling adding peers and deleting peers from a channel, which is uh, a synchronous channel for now. It's not buffered. Right? So if we call del peer and somebody wants to add a peer, it needs to wait before we delete the peer. So it's the same concept. 
which is also the same thing if we are adding a peer and it takes 10 minutes, but we also receive a message. Well, this message will not be processed for 10 minutes. So we need to maybe have another uh, mechanic. This thing, this part, maybe we should use this in another um, routine. This is a very advanced mechanics already, I know, but I mean, I mean, it, the thing is, what do you want to do in your life, right? Do you want to write uh, weekend warrior code on your job where you just need to do add user to a database, you know, all that shenanigans? Or do you want to be the guy that comes into the room and everybody, <gasps> everybody looks at him and he's the engineer. He is the protocol engineer. He writes the servers, right? Only he can, he, only he knows it. Which guy do you want to be? Right? Adding users to a database, doing uh, that stuff. Or do you want to write these protocols yourself? Right? Because they don't write themselves, right? There's always a guy that needs to do this. That's up to you. The good news is if you follow me and you watch my streams, you are going to be exactly that guy, right? The difference between 100K and 200K in a yearly salary. <clears throat> we have a line, a log line that I need to FMT. Brr. It's a main probably. Yes, what is this? We don't care. Oh wait, it's an error. Hey, what, you know what we can do also? Very important is... Um, How do you call that? It doesn't matter. Or does it? How do you call the version, the game type of poker? Like Texas Hold'em, you have, uh, I don't know, some other things. How do you call that? Uh, it's the game kind, game type, game variant, variant maybe. Uh, it's going to be an integer. I'm going to say type. Um, no, I'm going to say const Texas. Ingo. How do we Texas hold them? Texas hold them is going to be a game variant. Game variant. It's iota. Actually. Yeah, 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 like this, because we're going to send a game variant over the wire. Another another very good tip for you is this. A lot of people do will, will do this. Game variant string, right? Listen, this is also, again, a very important thing to know where you can um, be much better than everybody else. So it's game variant. People will say this. It's a string. So they will say Texas uh, Hold'em, right? <clears throat> okay, but this is... One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, uh, 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 more than 10 bytes, right? Over the wire. Why are you wasting bandwidth? So what you should do, if you make protocols and you're even distributed systems, you need to make things as small as possible, right? Even maybe use, instead of a bool, you can use a flag or something, but that's already a little bit advanced. So we can say game variants instead of a string. We say um, this. It's a byte, or a u and eight, which is also a byte. It's the same type. It's just uh, another thing. And I'm gonna say u and eight because it looks much leader, isn't it? It looks more. It has more swag. Um, it's like what a u and eight. That's crazy. One byte, eh? Don't forget this. Uh, so we're gonna say game, and actually, yeah, game variant, we're gonna say it's IOTA. And then we're gonna say, I don't know. What do we have? Caribbean poker or something? I don't know. Um, how do you call poker with five cards? I, I forgot. 
I forgot. So we're going to say game type is going to be a game variant, right? And then we can say, if we need to configure this, we're going to say the game type is going to be server. Uh, peer to peer. I'm so sorry. Peer to peer Texas Hold'em, right? Uh, and then in our um, server, where we say Texas Hold'em variant, we're going to say it's going to be S. How did we call this? Wait. Look what we're going to do. We're going to do cool things. Game type. I don't like this. We're going to change this to game variant. Like this. Yes. And then we're going to say um, game variant. Right. We're booting up two players, right? So we're boot, uh, booting up this player, uh, Texas Hold'em, this player, Texas Hold'em. Make a run. But what is this handling message? Who is do? Oh, it's the protocol thing. Uh, it's the message. No, the handler. It's this guy. Can we, can we do a new line then? Make a run. So, yes, we started two game servers, uh, different ports. The variant is zero, right? The variant is zero. Um, but listen, what you can do to make this a little bit better, you could say function um, um, v or gv game variant. You could say string. Uh, return a string like this. We could say uh, switch GV uh, case Texas Hold'em. And then we can return a string, right? We could say Texas uh, Hold'em because, <laughs> because this will happen on our side. So we sent a byte over the wire, right? And then we, 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 we know it. we can due to our logic and our code, we can print a string locally, so we don't need to send a string over the wire, but still print a string as a user-friendly experience. Uh, Texas Hold'em, and then otherwise it's going to be, I don't know, other. Right? What's going on here? Did I make a mistake? Yeah, of course. Uh, default, we could say um, unknown. Okay. Taxes hold. Yes, so they play the same things. And what we can do also is real quick uh, in server is actually say, we can't. Then we're gonna make a, pro then we're gonna make a handshake or something, right? Where we're gonna say, yo, Peer, send me what, what, time of what type of game are you playing? Texas Hold'em or something else? If you are not playing Texas Hold'em, you cannot join our party, right? Uh, that's what we need. Neil, uh, hey Anthony, is draw poker with five cards? I don't see your message in my... In my uh, in 
am I OBS? That's weird. Also, Novan, I'm not sure if you're still here, but uh, how to job that's cool and junior there. Oh. Is draw poker with five cards? No, uh, we, we play Texas Hold'em, it's basically with two cards. I don't know what the thing is for um, five card poker. I don't know. I will look it up soon. Yeah, I will do this, it's good. Um, Okay, let me think. Texas Hold'em. All right, the next thing we're gonna do is this handler. Um, this handler, so we have this handler, that handles or trend, uh, yeah, yeah. Do we need this handler? Not sure. And we also are not sending. Yeah, I see. All right, so. Port variant, that's good, that's good. I'm thinking, where are we handling these messages? It's in loop here. Then we say handler, handle a message. What we're gonna do is handle the message in the server itself. We're gonna say func s server. Uh, handle message. Like this, it's gonna be a message, which is a pointer to a message. Gonna return an error. And for now, let's uh, basically just log. Um, can we do log f? Probably not. Let's say fmt print f verbose like this new line, and uh, say the message like this. Return nil. Print f. What's going on? Yes. So, <clears throat> so instead of seeing the handler handling the message, we're going to handle the message ourselves. Handle message like this. If there is a panic, uh, yeah, for now it's good. What's going on here? Do I miss this? Yeah. We're gonna delete the handler. I'm gonna see if this works. Make a run. All right. So we get indeed we got an uh, a message from. The player, that's perfect. All right, the next thing what we're gonna do is, um, make a handshake, make a handshake. Yeah, a handshake, that's what we're gonna do. How are we gonna write this one? Uh, why do we need a handshake, right? We need a handshake because uh, if two peers connect with each other, and for example, we are playing Texas Hold'em, 
or basically maybe our table is full right if you're playing with six players or you're playing with ten and we already have ten players somebody connects we need to first do a handshake right we need to tell each other which version of the game we have maybe we have another version right another protocol maybe we are playing texas hold'em and you guys are playing texas don't hold them um so if 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 our versions if we don't agree on our handshake we need to basically drop the peer he cannot connect so i think a handshake is very important uh so we're gonna write this real quick it's also very important in distributed systems knowing how to do handshakes it's a very important aspect um a very important aspect can i actually test real quick uh something else where is it what's going on here here it's not working doesn't matter <laughs> all right so handshake um how are we gonna do this um handshake i think we should Do the handshake here. If we add a peer, we before we do this, we're gonna say S handshake, handshake, and we're gonna handshake with this peer. That's what we're gonna do. And uh, we're gonna say if there's an error in this handshake, we're gonna say continue. Log this uh, log, probably with fields or something. Actually. I don't do this. It's info probably like this. Um, handshake failed. Incoming, oh my God. Uh, incoming player failed, uh, like this. Handshake peer. All right, uh, handshake, right? So we're gonna write a handshake. We're gonna shake hands with the peer. Very important in distributed protocol uh, engineering. All right, so how are we going to do this? First of all, we need a handshake message. And let us write this here. Type um, handshake message. Or maybe just handshake like this. Yeah. The version, the question is. Uh, Let's, let's make the game variant, actually. That's important. It's going to be a game variant. Um, I 
Yeah, it doesn't matter. We can say version. Could be a string. We can make we can make this a little bit um, smaller in the future. But yeah. Game variant. Um, so who's gonna send a message if we connect? If we connect to a, if we are a player, a poker player, we uh, boot up our system and we connect to a remote. The question is, who's going to send the version first? I think we are responsible to send our version first. And then we as a server, we will see, you, you connect to me, I wait, I'm reading your version message and then I will respond with my version or basically not even respond, right? You sent me my version and I will decide if the game variant and, and maybe I'm full of players or something, I don't know. Uh, so that's what we're gonna do. So we're gonna read this thing. Um, how is this gonna work? How is it gonna work, handshake? We're gonna say, we're gonna gop and code once again. Uh, is it decode? I think it's got a new decoder actually. Uh, decoders, de that's gonna be, can I do this? That would be insane. Directly reading from the connection. We're gonna decode the con, we're gonna say decode, uh, a handshake, R not nil, like this. Then we're gonna say, Niels, uh, user ask the server and server respond with bool. Yeah, something like that. Um, but I was more thinking that when we connect to a, to a remote node, the remote node will wait till we send our version or game variant and all that stuff. And then we, as the, the node you're connecting to, we can decide, yo, <laughs> hey boy, your version is out of date or something, and we just drop it. We don't not even need to respond. We just drop him. Just drop the guy. Um, so we're gonna decode this thing. If there is an error, we're going to say return error, of course. And here we can say MT print F. Let's let's debug this real quick. Plus V, new line. Like this, and then say HR, which is the handshake, right? And then uh, return null here. And maybe you could say HS. Like this. Yes. Uh, of course, we're not sending it, right? So now we need to send. Actually, maybe we sent them both. Uh, server oh man my ears are <laughs> this noise cancellation made me uh, send handshake we could do a peer or a net adder uh, it doesn't actually makes a difference So we're gonna send our handshake, send handshake. So it's basically, we're gonna say HS is gonna be in handshake, uh, handshake like this, right? You're gonna say the game variant is our game variant, right? It's our game variant. And the version is going to be our version, right? Interstellar, to everyone new here, join this code. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice, man, thanks, thanks for helping me out. Um, 
The problem is I can I cannot see how many people are in the chat, how many people are in the stream. It just doesn't work. Um, it's always zero for me. So I have no clue uh, if I'm streaming for four people, five people, or maybe just nobody. That's why I always give my best. Um, so we're gonna make up our own handshake and then we're gonna say, uh, we're gonna decode this into a buffer and it's gonna be a new bytes buffer like this. And then we're gonna say if error, um, yeah, if error is uh, new encoder, yeah, new encoder. Encoder, we encode into the buffer, we encode our uh, handshake message. If the error is not nil, yeah, yeah. What is going on? We're gonna return the error, right? So now we have a nice buffer. We encode that in the buffer, and now we can send that over the wire. So we can say, uh, actually, we could say return peer send buff. What's going on? buff bytes right and that's going to return an error on its own right so when do we send the handshake well let us um, handle message well this is I'm gonna say let's make it a little bit cleaner log rus with fields uh, log rus fields uh, we're gonna say info received uh, handshake handshake this and of course we wanna print some things out we're gonna say player or node or peer maybe peer player it's the same thing right a peer represents a player on the network Right. Um, peer con remote address, yeah. Can be away. Then we can say uh, the version of this guy is going to be the decoded version of the handshake we received. And then we're going to say the variant this guy is playing. Um, it's going to be the handshake variant, right? And then we can say, actually, we can already uh, drop the connection because if his variant is not our variant, maybe we are playing Texas Hold'em and this guy plays, I don't know. Um, we can say, yo, we cannot play together uh, and drop the connection. It's game variant. Game. Uh, not sure it's going to work. Let's see what's going on. Always make run and see. Nothing's going on because we don't send it. So now we're going to send it. Where are we going to send it? I think a good way to handle this, actually we are sending it, right? No, we're not sending it. I'm thinking for a good mechanic to do this because one thing is for sure that we know that somebody is connected to our server. So why don't we automatically reply with our version? That, that maybe that's a good thing. Um, maybe we sent this handshake in another GoRoutine. Hey. It's working, eh? So, received handshake, right? We received the handshake from uh, another node. He's playing Texas Hold'em. And uh, yeah, it's GG Poker V <laughs> Alpha. It is what it is. Um, 
Handshake field during incoming player. So something is wrong. We need to check why that is. <laughs> you lock an error without actually logging the error. That's, uh, yeah. Error. Let's go. I see. It's not the first time I have this issue in, in, in this gold thingy. Man, why can I not? Format this, of course, um, because we are trash. And now it's good. That's crazy. You see, because now we receive actually the handshake from both from both parties, right? Not, not anymore. Something is wrong. I think this go encoding. Maybe some some data. I don't know. Duplicated type received. That's that's insane. Um, that's crazy. Why why did it work before? Again, let's run again. And again. No, a couple tries ago, it actually worked. So we're receiving a handshake, but the problem is. Um, Duplicated type received. What could that be? Uh, what could that be? Good question. Maybe it's a problem with the connection. Can we actually read this in... in I see what's going on. Now it's working fine, right? Yeah, it's working fine. The thing is, I think we have a problem with concurrently, concurrently writing to the same page. Yeah, I, I know what's going on. And we have the same issue in our blockchain, so that's good because... Um, so if we use this in a go routine, right? Uh, the problem is that we are writing to this connection, but we are also here writing to a connection. Uh, send handshake, handshake this. Let, let, Yeah, we're reading, right? And sending. I don't know. We, I need to check how this this uh, how this can be better in the future. Anyway, if a new peer connects, Handshake message, uh, I'm thinking, if a new peer connects to the server, we send our handshake message uh, and wait, uh, wait for this response, I'm thinking what I need to write, it's hard to type and think, uh, and wait for his uh, version of the Apply. Yeah. 
Yes. And the reason why we cannot do this uh, outside of this function, we need to do the handshake in one in one piece. We cannot add a peer to our pool, uh, to our map or something. We need to first have this handshake completed before we can uh, proceed. So the handshake. So we get the handshake. What we're going to do is basically compare, right? So we could say uh, if as a uh, variant is the game variant is not the same as the handshake game variant we're going to say return uh fmt error f uh, it's going to be error f rather error f um, invalid game variant You could say percent %s and then say uh, s. No, the handshake game variant, right? Yes. All right, you could also say um, if the version is not equal to the version of the handshake, you could do the same thing, right? You could say invalid version. But we need to make this logic a little bit better because it could be that we have, I don't know, Version one to two is compatible, but three is incompatible. So we need to do some semantic versioning in that thing. Uh, it's gonna be version, right? So that will basically means, wait. We're gonna say handshake. Uh, handshake successful. Successful. Like this, hand six successful develop, new player connected. That's cool. Let's see. Make run. Uh, hey man, a newbie here. I'm a beginner programmer and I'm currently learning Node.js and React next. Would you recommend this? Uh, if not, what language would you recommend? Well, actually, Mac, that depends. Uh, it depends what you want to be. A lot of people ask me the same question, like what, what language should I learn? Uh, but it depends on what you actually want to achieve in your life. Or, do you want to be a full stack developer? Do you want to make websites, right? Um, or do you want to be more a protocol engineer doing low level stuff, engineering like this, some, some blockchain protocols or decentralized peer to peer networks? Uh, it depends, right? So if you can tell me what you actually want to do in your life as a developer, I can exactly pinpoint the language you will need to learn today. Yes. so. Receive the handshake, handshake successful, player connected, right? And then uh, the, not the other side also does the handshake and it says player connected, all good. So what happens? What happens if we actually say, this Visual Studio Code always bugging me out. What happens if we say uh, here, like here are we, are we making these, um, these new players, right? Peers, nodes, whatever you want to call it, servers. So let's say I'm going to play other. Uh, an other, um, another in-game, another game variant. And if I'm connecting now, make run, right? The handshake with incoming player failed. And we still have this uh, duplicated type received. But the main uh, part of the story is we cannot make a successful handshake. So players won't be in our pool. We cannot play the game. That's the thing because we have different uh, game types. Is this? It's a peer to peer uh, Texas Hold'em. Let's make it work. Uh, I'm actually fairly fluent as a Solidity developer. I just don't enjoy it as much. Making yeah, I, I can I can see where you're going, uh, Mac. I don't also like it. Uh, I do it a lot, but I, I, I really don't like it. Um, I love just to be able to program my own IDs. Well, that's actually one of the best answers I ever heard, to be honest. Uh, makes a lot of sense what you're telling me. Um, well, it's a, it's a good question. I think if you just want to solve problems, right? If you just have, oh, I have an idea, I want to make it work really fast, then I could, maybe you could do TypeScript or, or JavaScript, right? Something like that, no GS, because um, you can easily boot up next GS and you can write your front end and your back end in the same app in the same uh, technology right in the same thing 
which will basically result in your problem is going to be solved much faster. Because if you're going to hassle with a backend in Python or a backend in, in, in Ruby or a backend in Go and then make another frontend in React and it's, it's, you have two editors open, two windows, and it's going to be nasty, right? If you want to adjust something, an API that returns a variable and you need to adjust it, you need to adjust it in, in JavaScript and in Go or in, or in Rust or something. So if you just want to solve solutions, I would recommend JavaScript. It's easy. You, sh you should know that. It's easy to understand and you can actually literally do anything with it. Um, and in my opinion, if you have a good understanding how to solve problems and you know the ins and outs of how programming languages work, then you basically can, can write every language, right? The first thing you need to do is learn to solve problems and know how to construct things in a programming language, when to use for loops, if else statements, uh, maps and all these stuff. For example, in JavaScript, and if you master that completely, it's just easy to write any other programming language, right? It's just the same principles, it's just another syntax. And the first weeks you will have some issues uh, not, re not remembering, not memorizing these syntax, but you can look it up, up uh, on the internet, right? And after a couple of weeks, you know it on the top of your head. Yeah, exactly. Although you could say some people can, can come to you, right? Like these gurus on Twitter say, yeah, but uh, JavaScript is, is boring, it's slow, and but that, that doesn't matter, right? Performance is never your problem, right? Never, ever. Because one, once you have a, per a performance problem, you're actually doing a very good job. If you're making, making a startup or something or a program, uh, an application, once you have an, a performance problem, it's actually a luxury problem because it means that you actually have traction, right? And most of the people don't get to traction. Nobody is using their programs, right? Nobody, literally no users. So anyway, JavaScript, man. JavaScript, TypeScript, Node.js, Next.js, Go ham and make something beautiful, man. Join our Discord because I'm going to release amazing news tonight or maybe tomorrow, probably tomorrow. We're going to do something amazing with the community and you can earn a prize. Yes, you can earn a prize, man. Logic is the most important. Yes, Neil. Mac, yeah, I've been making a nice application with my buddy. Yeah, yeah, nice, nice. We have 100k users so far, which is nice. Yeah, it's nice, man. It is nice. Focus on solving the problem. Uh, what is going on here? Yeah, man, Mac. You should join the Discord, subscribe, and I will release uh, it on Discord and on video tomorrow, what we are going to do. It's going to kick off your 2023 as an insane savage coding beast. I can guarantee. All right. Um, let me quickly see where we're going. So we have still the same problem with this. Uh, with this gop. I'm going to look that up later on. Why, why gop uh, does this, does this error. Salad blending. This is the first time I see you actually on stream. I know you watch all the videos, but it's the first time I, I see you on the stream, man. Hi, finally up to scratch with the blockchain series. Oh crap. Also the episode from yesterday, because we, we ran into trouble yesterday evening. Big issues. All right, so first things first. Wh why is actually I wanna know Handshake with incoming player field. Go duplicate type received. Let me quickly, uh, uh, what is going on actually? Sometimes I need to duplicate type received. Look, I'm not the first one. Here.
What else is going on here, man? How do you search here? Have you already seen this type? That's an error. Why? Why should it be? Why should it be actually? Um, is it in decode? Uh, receive type. That's crazy. Can we actually can we actually modify this? <laughs> We can't, we can't, we can't boys. Uh, <laughs> I can the standard library. All right, uh, we have this error. Question is why? Uh, may I ask what country you're from? I love your accent, I'm from Belgium. <laughs> I'm from Belgium. You're not the first one that uh, is laughing with my accent, but hey, I'm trying my best. It's like a mixture of uh, failed Dutch and um, yeah. Salad, I'm going to take a break for a few hours and then start with the poker series. Really enjoy your content. Have probably uh, said it 10,000 times. Thanks, man. Thanks. Much appreciated. You should also do the, the exchange thing, the exchange from scratch. You're going to love it. But I think you are a distributed guy, right? Distributed systems guy. Well, poker series is going, is going to be for you. Um, it got new encoders. Let me quickly boot this again up. But sometimes it works, right? Sometimes we... You see, this time it works. This time it's no errors. So what happens is basically we start up two players. They both gonna play Texas Hold'em. They do a handshake with each other. Uh, which basically they say, hey, that's my version. This is my game variant. They agree or they don't agree. And if they agree, they add each other to the pool. And they're ready to play, right? They're ready to deal, shuffle, and all that good stuff. Put on the glasses on, right? Their poker face. Um, yeah. Man, this VS Code, it's hanging. So I'm going to debug this um, GOP encoding, decoding issue over the wire off stream. But what I'm going to do is basically... Um, Make another uh, folder, and the question is, where do we do this? In P2Peer? Maybe. Another file, I mean. And it's going to be the game state. Uh, game state go. Uh, package. P2Peer. Type. Game. State. Struct. Like this. Yo, Sal, have a nice rest. Uh, so a game state. Let's open up server. You know what? We're going to open up game state here. And server here. Actually. I'm going to make this private. Uh, game state is going to be a pointer to a game state, right? Um, so if you make a new server, you're going to say that the game state is going to be a new game state. Like this. What's going on? New game state is going to return a pointer to a game state. Like this. Hop, hop, hop. Return. Uh, game state like this. Hop. So what do we need in a game state? That's a good question. Um, what states can we have in our game? I think we need to make, uh, what's going on here? Package. Yes, all working fine. We can say something. Uh, actually, let's boot up um, game state the other side. I changed my mind. We're going to say type. Um, uh, how can we call this? A round, maybe? Uh, 
not rounds. Um, actually, it should be the type game state, which we already have. How do we call this? Game round? It doesn't matter. It's not a strict. It's going to be an, um, a U and 8. Dealing. Dealing. Game round. Dealing. It should be game state. You know what we're going to do? We're going to call this game. These names, man. Uh, makes no sense. So what are we doing? We are dealing. Actually, what we could do, um, we could make this We're dealing. Then we have um, something like preflop or something, All right? Then we have yeah. Uh, we have we have uh, flop, turn, and river, right? It's important because we need to track um, in what state of the game we are. Because everything, like I said, is, it's a peer-to-peer, -peer, so everything happens very highly concurrently, so we need to keep track of these states. Um, so we need to say a round. That's going to be a U and 8. Actually, do we have this in atomic values? I'm going to teach you something very, very important, and that's... Um, I'm also going to make a special video about it. It's atomic values. Um... Copy. What's going on? Welcome. Um. Round is a U wins. Yes, dealing with uh, nonsense. So, game state, I'm thinking it should be in uh, atomic value. The question is, do we have a normal int in atomic? I don't think so. Let me quickly test this in main. Where is main? Do we have atomic values actually? Uh, atomic. Damn it, we don't have it. So what we need dealing should be can be iota, but we need uh, un32. That's what we need. Doesn't make any sense, but it is what it is. Uh, un32. All right, taking care of business. The question is, uh, we also need a loop, right? So we need to do something like, um, it's gonna be a pointer to a game state uh, like this. We're gonna say a loop, 
or game loop or round loop, whatever. I'm gonna say loop like this. I'm gonna be four select. Uh, And I need to think about this because I, uh, this is basically pure improvisation. Pure improvisation. Actually, this round dealing, I don't think it actually matters in this case um, because we're going to have two, two important states, I think. Um, OPS chat broken. Anyway, so our game should have two states, or we are in the in the dealing phase because it's a very important phase because we're gonna how things are gonna work is um, all players. Hello, Darren Deep. What's up, man? I remember your name by the way. Um, so how the dealing is gonna work is basically uh, every player is gonna get. There will be actually one base dealer, the first one, it's gonna be randomly picked. He's gonna shuffle the deck. He's gonna encrypt it with his key. He's gonna send that to the next player. And that player is gonna shuffle the deck, shuffle the encrypted cards, and encrypt all the cards with his key. And so on. Till every player on the table has encrypted, shuffled and encrypted that deck. That's the first thing we need to do. Then we're gonna shuffle things, then we can deal. And then it should be something where um, each player can basically give his key when it's shuffled. Or something like that. Each player can give his key when it's shuffled, so only Yeah. I will, I, I, that's gonna work. Then the players can encrypt their cards, right? And then for the rest of the game, everybody gives his key to see the open cards. I will have this written out. It's not my, it's not my uh, algorithm. It already exists and we're gonna implement that into the game, right? So we're gonna have two important uh, states, the dealing state and then basically the game state, the, the playing state. And that state should have pre-flop, flop, turn, river, right? Um, and I'm thinking, so if the state is looping, do we actually care about this loop? Not for now, not for now actually. Um, the round, and then we should have game state. Um, is dealers maybe a boolean? That can be an atomic boolean. Uh, atomic value. You could say atomic accessible. Accessible like this. And this, this, and this, and do the same thing for this. Yeah, I think that should be good. Do we need a loop? Probably we do. Then what is going on with, with this, all these things? Oh man. Oh, we tracked it, I see. Sometimes the chat, it's, it's behaving weird, I'm not gonna lie. Nightbot sometimes, man. Let's open up server real quick. So 
So this thing I need to fix. I'm gonna look up at, uh, upstream what this is causing. It's probably a concurrent read to a connection. Um, and maybe Gob Encoding does something, I don't know. Or maybe we just actually make our own encoding protocol. Just write to binary, little endian, and all, fix all that stuff. And then we are basically um, done with this, with this Gob Encoder because not the first time Gob is letting me down. Yeah. And actually, maybe we can do that. We can try it actually, at least. Why not? Um, I think it's going to make sense to do it. Maybe we can make something like um, handshake. Decode. Actually, do we need decode? Let, let's start with encode, to be honest. Uh, encode. Like this. Um, we're going to take our writer. And a writer like this. Man, this VS Code lagging like hell. Uh, return an error. You could say binary uh, writes binary a little endian. Um, actually, it should be our writer, and then we're gonna say hr version and do the same thing for game variant. Just copy this, uh, this bit. Hop. Yeah, return the errors. Actually, <laughs> you could do this. I'm a retard. Hop, hop, delete this and call it a day. So that's encode. This version is gonna work because it's a string. That's nasty. Uh, well, you can, yeah, 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 yeah. I see, I see, I see, I see. Maybe something like maybe we can cost this. I don't know. We can't. We can. Next, we're gonna do is uh, make the decode function so we can actually read this over the wire, right? Uh, handshake. Uh, handshake. Decode. Reader. Um, can we do the same function? But instead of writing, we're reading and we take uh, put in the reader instead of the writer. Um, let's make a buffer right here. No, we can't. We can. Read into the reader. That's what we're going to do. Alright, so how is it going to work instead of this GOP decoder? We're going to leave this uh, commented out, commented out, yeah. So we're going to say if R is going to be handshake decode the connection, that's the only thing we need to do. Uh, we can return the error, yeah. I'll let us see if we can already uh, do this. Make a run. Binary read. I know. Uh, encode. Where are we encoding this? Uh, 
Where are we encoding this thing? It's in handshake, right? I mean, sent handshake. Sent handshake here. Uh, I'm going to say this, and I'm going to say uh, if add equals um, handshake encode the buffer error not nil uh, return error yeah it's gonna be the same thing right let's see if this works handle incoming field why binary read invalid type i think it's reading actually a number but it should be the game variant so i think we need to cast it uh, if we're decoding this stuff Wait, it's an invalid type. Wait, wait, wait. Binary read. Uno secundo. Binary read. Where are we doing this? Here. Uh, game variant. That's a byte, right? Or, uh, yeah. Why should it not work, actually? I don't know. Makes no sense to me. Cannot read and, and type you in date. Why not? That's going on. Yeah, it's, it's. Wait, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah I have an idea. I would never recommend writing your own protocols, by the way. You could use protobuffer or something. <laughs> you will have a much better time. But hey, this is all dem uh, educational, right? I mean, you need to know how these things work under the from a low-level perspective if you want to understand things, right? Um, so we are writing this game variant, and maybe we need to cast this to a byte or something. Of course, and then if we decode this thing, uh, maybe this is going to work. Out of the box, out of the bat. Make run, please. Okay, now, now we are reading. Yeah? Now we are reading a problem. Oh, I know what's going on. I'm an idiot. Um, It's good, but now we have the uh, an, in, an unknown game variant. Wait. Uh. It's reading into that type. I see, I see, I see. Can we do... I see, man. I see, I see, I see, guys. No, 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 no. Why can it not just read it into that value? You know what? I have an idea. We're gonna... We're gonna say this. Um, it actually makes no sense what I'm gonna do, but... 
uh, uint8 variant yeah and I'm gonna say binary what's going on here did any var like this binary read <laughs> that's why I'm using gop encoding by the way because they don't need to deal with the shenanigans um, variant like this and we're going to take the address of this thing uh, it's going to be n variant right and then we're going to say h game variant is going to be the variant no a game variant C come on uh, game variant I'm gonna cast this thing variant of the <laughs> variant hey don't know buffer we are working with buffers once again each time you come to the stream I don't know why it is maybe you're always in the stream but only when I work with buffers you are at the party so man each time I'm doing decoding over, uh, over TCP or something, you are at the party. It's crazy. It's God. We, we, we belong together, man. You belong here, Buffer. And you know it. <laughs> oh, man. Invalid game variant. Unknown. Why is it unknown, man? I mean, what is this? What is this, this, this variable? What the hell is going on? Panic me this thing. 71. It, 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 it's gonna work. It's impossible what I'm doing here. Uh, little onion. Um... Man, I cannot even decode a simple, a simple byte. And it's because it's, it's, it's complaining. Maybe it's, it, 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 I don't know. It's doing the type. I have no clue. I have no clue. I'm going to look it up because this is annoying. This should not be happening. This should not. <laughs> Buffer. It should not clutter up my time, these, these simple things. Um, the only thing, I'm, you know, I'm using a lot of GOP encoding because it's easy, right? But GOP encoding right now gives me a lot of issues. Because we're sending... I need to check it. I promise, I think it's where I'm going to check it. Uh, otherwise, let me revert back quickly. Uh, to this GOP encoding real quick, delete this, uh, so I can check that, uh, and then go back to here, return it back in the state it was, so we can actually move on, clear, make a run, alright, so you see we, ha we have this duplicated type with the GOP encoding, no idea, if you know what it is, uh, leave, a mess uh, leave a comment, that would be nice. Uh, I'm going to fix it. But we have our handshake working. We So we're actually ready. We have a game state. So in the next thing, maybe I'm going to stream it tonight. Or maybe we do tonight a simple stream. Um, a beginner stream for Golang or something. I'm not quite sure what the people want. I will do. Or we continue this. Where we're going to deal cards, encrypt them, shuffle. And we're going to play some poker over the wire. Isn't that amazing? Only here, only be done here live on the channel, man. Are there any questions? If there are questions, please feel free. It doesn't matter. It can be programming questions. It can be questions about Golang. It can be questions about anything you want. I will provide you with the truth and the undisputed, undisputed truth only. And I still have coffee. That's the best part of the day. You know that feeling when you look in, when you don't see if there is coffee in your thing? But then it is. 
It's amazing, amazing feeling. And my OBS chat is basically broken. I don't know why. I'm still a rookie. Oh. It's working. I just need to uh, make live chat. I need to click it. <laughs> that's why I don't that, that's why I don't fix printers, right? We are too stupid for that. Oh. And actually I'm looking I'm looking forward to actually continue. So I'm gonna do a little rest. I'm gonna eat, I go to the gym. I'm gonna check up what this GOP encoding shenanigans actually means. So we can actually send cards to just play poker, man. Decentralized, that's amazing. I can't wait. I can't wait to make this work, by, to be honest. I literally can't wake, wait, wake. Like a little child. So there are, if there are no questions, then uh, maybe I should wait because I don't know how many delay there is on uh, on YouTube in the chat. I have no clue. So I'm going to retweet it in the meanwhile. Nothing happened. Anyway, so if you if you still have questions, uh, even if you watch uh, watch the replay, you can. Uh, how do you handle byte order? Good question, buffer. That this question comes from you. That makes a lot of sense. Well, you handle it like this, right? Uh, it depends. So if, if if I'm making my own protocol, I can just write it. For example, here, if I encode it, we can just write it in a binary form and we can say little endian, which is the most common byte order these days. I think some processors use, uh, for their instructions, use uh, big endian. But it doesn't matter what we do. It can run on each processor. It's just the way we format our, our bytes, right? Um, and if you want to use big endian, you just say big endian and you write it in a big endian form, which basically means that if you're writing your int, let's say you need to write uh, eight bytes, for example, a UN64 is going to reverse the bytes. And if you want to decode that, you need to know that because otherwise you will end up with a different number. <laughs> That's how you handle it, pretty easy. Like I said, Golang, if you want to do these things, concurrency things, protocols, Golang is amazing because the standard library, I don't need to use anything, right? I can, it's all provided for me in the standard library, which is amazing. Um, yeah. Yes, yes. Thanks, Buffer, for this amazing question. And like I mentioned, a lot of people will think, yeah, but why don't you use ProtoBuffer or something or... or Something else, RabbitMQ, the library, completely true, and I 100% agree. But if you want to learn something, I recommend write everything yourself. It will take a long time, I understand, and you will come into a lot of issues, completely agree, but you will learn so much more, right? You will learn, you will know more than, than, than other people. And that's the difference, right? That, that's the difference. You need to challenge yourself each day to become better, to understand what these libraries are doing, because that will actually, and that's, that's basically no lie, it will make a difference in where you're gonna work. What's your, what, what's your yearly sad? It's the end of the stream and then I'm always getting my uh, autistic attacks. I'm so sorry. But it will make the difference between 100K and 200K engineer. And it is what it is. It is what it is. Got it, thanks, Buffer. Uh, yeah, so thanks for watching. If you're not on the Discord, jump into our Discord uh, because I'm gonna, like I mentioned before, I'm gonna release some good news. Probably, maybe tonight, maybe tomorrow. Uh, what we're gonna do with the community and you can win amazing things. You can win money. And everybody will, will, will make something. Not money, but everybody will have some benefits. Um, yeah, so subscribe to my channel. If you like this content, if you like these videos, join to the Discord, join our Discord, uh, thumbs up, leave a comment, and I'll see you tonight for another stream. Bye-bye. Thank you so much. Peace.